Okay, that might have been a little extreme. So, I did a little bit of research on this, and the general consensus seems to be that women nag in an effort to express their needs in a relationship. But, they expect their significant other to understand what they want without having to spell it out. Don't you yell at me! Let's take a look at some of the more sinister, undignified remedies men have used to handle the age-old misunderstandings or intolerances of his favorite counterparts. The best place to look is deep inside a medieval dungeon where such masterpieces of necessity were created. The Skull's Bridal was a crude iron cage for a woman's face used to punish scolds or women who nagged, gossiped, talked back, or just talked too much. For the fashion conscience of the day, it came in a wide variety of styles and varieties. The bridle would be locked onto the offender's head, and a protruding piece of metal covered in spikes would be forced inside her mouth. The detriment here was every time she moved her tongue, the spikes would lacerate. Sometimes the bridled woman was chained to a hook on the fireplace until she learned her lesson. Or she might be paraded through town wearing the atrocious mask to increase her humiliation. This next innovative device was either for a solo punishment or a duet of yapping ladies. Strategically called a shrew's fiddle, it was a type of yoke, a wooden restraint, used to punish and restrict the wearer. A woman may be made to wear it alone, perhaps walking up and down the street for a couple hours of public punishment. Like a medieval runway. <laughs> or, she might be yoked to a gabby friend whom she was fighting with. Can you imagine how well feuding women today would react to being stuck so close to their female rival or enemy? If jarring females kindle strife, give language foul or love the coif. If noisy dames should once begin to drive a house with horrid din, away you cry, you'll grace the stool. We'll teach you how your tongue to rule. Another must-have punishment for the common scold was the cucking stool, or stool of repentance. This one was for both scolds and strumpets, strapped to a wooden chair with no seat, like a toilet, and forced to sit outside your home, or paraded across town on poles. Such women were subjected to the derision of townsfolk as they passed by. Or, the justice system would take it further if they had the means, and it became a ducking stool, strapped in with knobs on it that controlled long beams that swung on an axle. She would be rolled out to be dunked into the water as many times as the discipline dictated. And he souse! The stool went down again, into the slush I'm splashing, but still the bag never a gag, kept up her vile tongue lashing. Hussows! Now let the stool stay down, and save us further trouble. But still her tongue assailed the throng in every rising bubble. The next brutal bubble for the incessant babbling beauties was the heretic's fork. Mainly imposed to draw confessions, it also served as a deterrent for fanatical females. A double-sided pair of forks attached to the neck with a strap or collar. The person bound to the simple implement would suffer continuous pain as they were unable to move their head or lower jaw for relief. The four tines were always piercing into their neck or sternum. Any attempt to move or speak resulted in immense pain. 
And now, the word from our sponsors. Cursed be the man, the poorest wretch in life, the crouching vessel to a tyrant wife. Who must that he, his fear friend, a secret to tell, who dreads a curtain lecture worse than hell? Were such the wife had fallen to my part, I'd break her spirit or break her heart. I'd charm her maids with the magic of the switch. I'd kiss her maids and kick the perverse. We now return to your regularly scheduled programming. Uh oh! Huzzah! It wasn't all bad in medieval times. There was always time for a good joust. Pears were a popular fruit choice among the medieval set. Fruit cuisine included pears and red wine and spiced custard tarts. Giving recognition for the delicious pear, I just have to say... Ooh. Unfortunately, the anguished pear or choking pear was the brainiac idea of another treacherous device catering primarily to women. It was an extremely frightening and painful device used to punish women for being liars, blasphemous, or suffering multiple miscarriages. True evil can be noted in its design. Let's suffice it to say the hard metal mechanism was heated to a searing temperature then inserted into one's orifices. It consisted of four leaves that slowly separated as the torturer turned the screw at the top. The pair of anguish rarely caused instant death, but its victims did suffer from internal organ damage and usually died from infection. Many punishments existed for adultery all included severe forms of personal humiliation and shame. Marching an adulteress in public, jeering at her embarrassment, even branding, was not as harsh as some treatments for women. One of the most horrific devices ever created was the Iron Spider, also known as the Breast Ripper. This primal but efficient device was used to slowly rip the breast from women for various crimes. With four sharp talons, it was designed to shred or violently tear the body parts off. If the convicted did not die, she would be grossly disfigured for the rest of her life after the manual mutilation. The sister form of this is spiked bars affixed to the wall. The victim was then pulled along the wall until their targets were ripped away. We can only hope something has evolved inside all of us where such unconscionable truths of civilization can never repeat themselves. And people can be with whomever they want without public backlash or display. It goes without saying that nobody should ever suffer shame for what they already know or have chosen, let alone have their bodies tortured and mutilated in the name of justice. Most of my viewers already know I genuinely like most people, and it's no doubt I have respect for women. I made parts of this presentation using wry humor and irony to tackle the otherwise bleak subject matter, but it is a story I did want to tell. But I have a passion for history and strange things people do. Now enjoy this Renaissance eye candy. All women are beautiful. <laughs>